Hello, welcome to The Profile. My name's Gary Dunn, and I'm sitting here in the bowels of Procopy. And thanks to Procopy, we get an opportunity every week to interview one of Perth's more colourful musicians. And uh, this week, we have a very special guest, a man of big magnitude in the industry here, uh, Mr John Pekovich. How are you, John? Good, guys. How are you? Thank you very much for coming. Pleasure. Get a bit of an insight into your journey and your career in the music industry and listen to a few of your stories. Um, thank you for the opportunity, opportunity to do that. So. Oh, mate, I'm flattered to be here. Thank you. Uh, my producer says I've, uh, if you ramble on, I have to sort of cut you back and... You know, because he thinks we might go ten episodes if I let you keep talking. So. Me? No, I, well, don't, I don't talk much at all, Gary. Tell you what my producers told me. and He's, first, just, a jeal- he was just a jealous, you know, he was jealous, always <laughs> jealous. He had a little weenie, weenie, weenie <laughs> drum kit <laughs> along with other, with other appendages of every weenie. And I oh, was bigger in Texas. You know? We'll talk about your big uh, gong later. Oh, I've always had a big gong. Yeah, mm-hmm. yep, I know. You were famous for that. <laughs> Look, uh, just getting uh, all seriousness, uh, where yeah. were you born, John? Where did it start? I was born in Perth, in St John and God Hospital. Yeah? Yeah. And um, what was the catalyst for you to to become a musician, that, that moment where you thought, well, this is what I'm going to do? Happened on several different levels. First was as a very, very young child, um, somebody who you know and play with, uh, Steph, oh. uh, Stephanie's father, were related. Yep. And um, he was a drummer. He was a dance yep. dance band drummer. That was my first influence. And then later, growing up, school used to do things like wag school so I could go into what was called the Troubadour Club opposite the King Edward Hotel in Hay Street. And yep. I used to sneak in there in my lunch hours so I could, they used to have bands on. Mm. Like you'd have rock bands in Perth yep. at lunchtime. Yep. Wow. And you'd go into these clubs. It's free to get in and all of that. And I used to uh, used to go in there to watch Max Merritt and the Meteors. And the cat, wow. cat's name was Stewie Spears, was the yep. drummer. And I'd never heard anybody with just such little movement in his yep. hand. Every time he hit the snare, it was like a three, five, seven going off near you. You see the drummer on the film clip in Baby, I've been watching you. That was. Yeah, was, yeah, long greyish hair, yeah, yeah. the little hat. Yeah, that's he passed away shortly yeah, yeah, after. Yeah, yeah, he did. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, wow. So, what's your main instrument? We, well, we know, but drums and vocals. Have you ever played any other instruments? Or I, ha- I was originally given a guitar um, by my my god uh, my godfather gave me an acoustic guitar, which I attempted to try to play for you know all the way. From probably six, seven, eight, but it was easier because Elvis was just coming out. Yep. And I had little fat, well, I still got fat wog fingers. <laughs> and they could not get around the neck of a guitar. Yeah. But if you turn the thing over, it made a great drum. It's much easier to play guitar like that. Mm. Like so every tough. time relatives or friends came to the house, in grab the guitar, come out and do my, do my Elvis impersonation, yep. take a bow and go to bed. Wow. So what was, would have been the first concert you went to as a youngster? God, I knew you were going to ask this and I'm forgotten again already. Um, I believe it would have been the Rolling Stones at the Wacker. Wow. And been. I didn't jump over the back fence. Like everyone else. No. <laughs> you actually paid. And um, Mum, I'm sorry, I lied. <laughs> In fact, I better apologise in advance because there's a lot of stuff that might be coming out tonight that my family know nothing about. But anyway, so be it. That was the first one. Yeah. Bands you played in. So when did you start playing live on stage? How old were you? And First first one, again, um, sorry family, um, was supposed to be with a mate and I was then taken with a forged letter to the Thornley <laughs> Hotel to play a gig with a band called Max and the Unicorns. Oh, right. And like yourself, Max was a Geordie. Yeah, we a man. He. He was a good and, bloke then. He did. And, uh, and the Thornley Hotel, or Thornley at mm. that time, was like where all the English migrants yes. were, the, were yep. settled. Yeah. So it was total confusion for me because <laughs> I was in a room full of Caucasian people, none of whom I could understand, and playing with a band that I'd never played with before. Yep. And 
from there, um, God, I went through uh, Package, Eminence, Elfin Blade, the Cherokees. Um, Quite a bit of experience before you obviously got to the mixtures. I think yeah. that's the first time I saw you. Yeah. Mm. Well, it was, it, was a, it, was, it was like we were talking earlier. It was a transitional period because it, uh, Perth was so, you know, further, you know, everybody says we're, you know, isolated, but yes. you can imagine what it was like then. Mm. If you did have interstate or international bands touring, they didn't come in and do a gig and then take off at 12 yeah. o'clock tonight. Yeah. You had bands like Freddie Garrity and the Dreamers and uh, Brian Poole and the Tremolos, yeah. um, Sounds Incorporated, all these big international bands, and they would be resident at Pinocchio's yeah. for a month. Yeah. And that was it. That was the only way it was financially viable. So. As much as when I started playing, I had this idealistic, I'm going to be a great technical drummer. Yes. The whole thing started to shift. It became more about being an entertainer. Yeah. And that was when I learnt from people like um, Peter Bull Troupadours. Yeah. yeah. Again, not a great drummer, but he had the most insane falsetto voice. He used to sing Roy Orbis and stuff. Yeah. So, you know, I used to sneak around and, hey, how do you sing like that, mate, <laughs> you know? Yep. So he taught me how to, how to use my falsetto. Yeah. I saw people like Cliff Toll in, in, in bands, uh, what was he, and then Mark IV. Yeah. All those guys, Johnny Coyne, Jeff Lally, guys that nobody now even remember or yeah. talk about. And these are guys that I used to go and study. Yeah. And then ultimately it was... You know the little octopus who I hate. <laughs> Why? Tell Rick us Whittle. Story. He's an octopus. Yeah. You no, know, no, really. He just play. He looks like he's just got two hands and two feet. That's crap. <laughs> he's got eight. Yeah, at the back, he's got another set of hands <laughs> and another couple of sets of feet. Rick said something really nice to me once, given that he has such a great tech and he's still mm. a great technician. And he's he came to a gig. I was doing one night at the Herdsman Hotel and the great John Bellani, yep. rest his soul, was our front of house engineer. He used, me, used to make me go to the gig three hours before everybody else <laughs> and was just so pedantic about how my drums sounded. And looked up one night and there was Rick Whittle there and I'm going, God, the, the best drummer in mm. town's come to see lucky, my gig. No, lucky you had yeah, three like, hours of... of oh, um, yeah. <laughs> Go, oh, g'day, Rick, how you going? And what's it like? You know, and I'm expecting him to say, oh, you're playing really good, mate. You know, and he goes, Jesus, your drum sounds great. <laughs> and I thought, now, was that, a, was that a disguise punch in the face or what? But, yeah, I uh, had two lessons, drum lessons. One was with Nutty Cook, Ashley Cook's father. Yes. And the other one was with the late, great, and miss him dearly, Jack Vanderswan. Yeah. Um, and I bought, I bought the mega kit from Jack. That was when I decided this was all, you know. Was that when he was in Vox Adian? Vox Adian yeah, downstairs. Yeah. Downstairs, yeah, yeah. 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 And it was, uh, you know, I thought they were, prim you know, helping me, but really what they were doing was generating sales. Yes, of know. course. In comes the Wog Kid. Oh, I'll sell him a double bass drum kit, and I'll sell him bigger oversized drums and I'll sell him as massive gong. I just you, kept... you were always the bigger, you were always a like, bit larger than life. So yeah, you, you... I mean, it was more about putting on a show, being an entertainer, because yep. I realised my limitations mm. very early. And so I, so I you knew felt I you had to make up for that? Yeah, by... yeah, I mean, mate, I make no bones about the fact that I never got one job in any band for being a great drummer. Yep. Um, I probably got into a lot of bands because I, I could sing harmonies and I had a falsetto. Yeah. Um, we didn't see many drummers, uh, really, uh, that could sing like it. No, like no. That. Well, it was, it, it was my ticket. Yeah. Basically, it was my ticket. And uh, I was just fortunate that I, I played in some bands uh, like Statesman, which was a, a really uh, full-on Har harmony bands, yeah. six-piece harmonies, played with some great players. Um, I've played with players well out of my league. Yeah. I've always been fortunate. I've been, I've been, the, I've been the anchor in those bands, dragging them down, because just about every player musically that yeah. I played with were, were great players. Yeah. 
Maybe that's just your story because we all th always thought you were good. So, <laughs> <laughs> so mixtures. Um, yeah. Because yeah, I had Brendan Fosdyke on a while ago and yeah. obviously Brendan was in yeah. the band as well. That was a funny one. Uh, on stage, uh, I was playing with the Statesman. I was on stage at the Old Lion Hotel in Adelaide, yeah. pre-mobile phones, and a guy called Don O'Sullivan, who was managing the hotel, um, and he was in partnership with a Perth guy called Howie Sangster, yeah. the, the Sangster family that used to own Leadable Motors. Yeah. I came up the side of the stage, and the guy ran across the back of the stage and put a note on my floor, Tom ring this number, urgent. And it was Fozzy, it was right. Brenton on the phone when I went to ring and he said, how would you like a gig? And I went, well, we're on, we're on our way back to Perth. We've just, we're finishing off this tour. He said, uh, right, he said, uh, pack it all up, chuck it on a plane, get your ass up here. Mm. Um, you, gonna you wanna join the mixtures? Yep. I just went, are, are you kidding? Yeah, um, went, yeah, yeah, you know, in my head, not realising I've got a band on the stage, well, <laughs> you know, and what's going to happen? So I, I was torn. I spoke to Jeff McCauley, the bass player, and he went, go. Go for it, get, yeah. Get going. So your friends. Though. And that was it. Yeah. And that was, that was a huge freak out, getting so, my first pay packet, <laughs> which I thought, which I thought, this has got to be an advance or something along those lines. Yeah. But I got the money I got paid for the first ever gig I did with the band was more than I'd earned in a month in yes. any other band. <laughs> Brendan told me the same story. Oh, yeah. Well, he went out and bought an A9X uh, yes. hatchback Holden, and I went out and bought a uh, Trans Am Pontiac with the wow. big, you know, the smoky in the band. The all big car. Yeah, yeah, it matched the gong and the Mat big kit. Everything. And everything, everything else big. that's big about me. So Dennis Broad, he was, was he Breakaway? He was Breakaway. We, uh, the two bands amalgamated yeah. out of, uh, just quite, quietly by accident, Chris Spooner, God rest his soul, yeah. bass player, insanely good dude, uh, with the mixtures. Um, he was a tripod fisherman. You know, see, if you drive along the coast here yeah. sometimes around Triggs and stuff, you'll see guys sitting on these aluminium tripods. Yeah, yeah. And it's looks, they look like they're floating on the water, but they've actually been there for like six hours yep. when there was no tide. Here's so it. as the tides go in and out, they fish. Yeah. God knows why Chris did it, but one night uh, we'd finished at Pinocchio's about three o'clock in the morning and he couldn't wait to get the hell out of there. He had his tripod on top of his... He had an L34 Tirana. Well, you like always carried your tripod around with you, didn't I you? I did, so. I did, yeah. And... Um, <laughs> And unfortunately, you know, God took him that night. Wow. He, he disappeared and uh, he was missing for about two and a half weeks. At the same time, Breakaway had, I'm not sure how it came about, but Ray Wood, their drummer, another good player. Yeah. I think Ray was going overseas or something like that. And I think Joe Cosey was going to move yeah. on and going to manage or clubs or something. I, you know, sorry if I'm... No. If I don't get it completely Please, right. Please, Michael, anyway, Jesus is going yeah. like this, but is he? we don't worry about it. Where is he? Can I throw something at him? Well, I wouldn't mind. I'm Let's prone to throw something. things. <laughs> I'm pretty, get me a drumstick, I can hit him from 30 metres. Um, yeah, so it, it, it was a convenience thing. We had, uh, the mixtures had so much work here. Yep. And touring and stuff all still lined up. Uh, and suddenly we didn't have a bass player. Yeah. And... Um, then we, uh, I don't know who, how it came about actually, but Joe Cosey I think had something to do with it. Um, and Paul Reynolds, who was the bass player with Breakaway, yeah. joined us and then we went into major rehearsals at Joe's house actually. Yeah. And uh, the lineup was uh, Pete Williams, myself, Brenton Fosdyke, mm -hmm. Paul Reynolds, Great player, if I haven't already said it. Yep. And Pastor Robert Scott on, oh, okay. on keyboards. With Mr. Scott. <laughs> Mr. Scott, <laughs> Father Scott. That cosmic, yeah. yeah. And um, so then you got Sweethearts, that turned into the, the band that was pretty successful around the pubs was also the Invaders. Yep. That. Invaders yep. Was, uh, was another, was another, that's kind of where I went from 
that was the end of all bullshit. Yeah. Excuse the expression. No, okay. That was when we've had the Dad Joe's on here saying worse words than that, mate. Oh, it is. Okay. Well, that's where I learnt bullshit from. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, that's suddenly I went. Uh, this is this is nuts. Mm. You know, I don't have to do the and the, yeah. you know and wear the satin suit yeah. anymore. We're writing our own tunes. Uh, we're playing you know a cross of. Thin Lizzy meets Jethro Tull yep. meets Bad Company meets everything incredibly ugly and <laughs> it was put your jeans and your blue singlet on and you know drink as much as you possibly can yep. and smoke as much as you possibly can but again got to play with some really good players Fantastic. Robbie um, Pizzano. Robbie Pisano yep. um, Jamie Page yeah fantastic um, she was in um, she was in the band, yep. um, Stevie Yard and yep. John Worrell, who was yes. originally with with um, Fatty Lumpkin yes. and other great bands yes. in Perth. And John had come back to Perth, and um, we started gigging, yep. and it was it was fantastic. I got to play a three piece kit, and uh, it was just all about driving it, yeah, driving it, and keeping yep. it straight. And that was in a time where crowds were just flocking into the places we were playing yeah in. yeah well you know i i often humorously say when people are going oh, i've done this and i've done that and i've been here and done that and i say but have you played at the city hotel on yes. a friday night yeah, yeah. to the seventh fleet yes <laughs> that sort of stuff because the city hotel was so yeah. small yeah you know people would be right there well you had the you... bar in the middle yeah. like that didn't you and yeah well john john the singer up. i mean he'd be doing his he'd be yeah. doing his jethro toll and he could where he stood, he could just put his foot up, and he could actually, mm. you know, he'd be half on the stage and half on the, yeah. half on the bar. So, but sorry, go ahead. No, no, please. No, no, I, I, I got there. Off. You got there. <laughs> Eventually. You just can't. Is he still? Where is he? <coughs> throw the throw the hen at him. Okay. Look, just um, tell me tell me when he does it again. Okay. Is he, he's no over worries. here. Yeah, okay. yeah. You get um, ready over there, fat boy. <laughs> he's ready. He's got his mitts on. Um, so after that, you went into management for a while. Yeah. Um, Is that where it moved from? Bricks, um, we went from, yeah, pretty much, pretty much. After the invaders and um, I, I, I took a step back because then I had this conflict going on in my head, you know. Um, to go on, you've got to get really serious and start doing some really serious work because this isn't about satin suits and dance steps and looking gorgeous anymore. This yep. is about writing. This is about being technically good at what you do. I was, um, I wasn't in a good space really. Yep. Uh, there was lots of stuff going on. Too much drinking, too much of everything, too much indulgence. And I stepped back and um, again, Forgive me for not being able to remember everything, but Peter Dean from the Jets yep. contacted me and said, you should have a look at this guy. There's this band I've given him a gig to. And he said, uh, go and have a look. Um, I went to the Windsor Hotel when the old Windsor Hotel yep. had a beer garden before they built that stupid barn that's now yep. totally dysfunctional. And I was in the car park going to walk in and... The band were playing, uh, the the um, the DJ or the, whoever were playing break music, and yep. it was uh, drop the pilot. Yep. I thought, oh god, you know, coming out of the invaders, and it was all here, and oh, you know, and I'm listening to puppy, bump, puppy, you know, bump, and I thought, bump, oh, no, bump, bump. Is, that, is that what this band, is? you know? Oh, I don't know. Anyway, walked in. And it was the band that was playing and yep. the guy that was singing, Tyrone Coates. One minute he sounded like Joan Armour Trading, the next minute he sounded like Bon Jovi. Yep. The next, he, this guy had potential. Yeah. I thought, I thought this, this guy's got something. But he was a porker. Yeah. He was a real porker. And I hope, <laughs> hope he forgives me if he ever hears this. <laughs> but I got up his nose about, you know, if you're gonna be good, you got to work hard. You're not working hard enough. But that's that's how it all started, anyway. Yeah. Well, and they became 
Uh, I don't know what they were called right at that particular moment, but they, mm. they were soon to become Flash, Flash Harry. Flash Harry, that's right. Yeah. And um, we, we spent some great years together, mm. those guys yeah. and, um, and Lady. I believe Tyron said that um, uh, if it wasn't for you, he probably wouldn't be in the industry today because he learnt all his discipline from you. Oh, wow. And I, for my life, me can't imagine musicians being disciplined at that age. Because we certainly weren't. He, we just he he a mark. he was serious. Yeah, I could see it. I could see it in him. Mm. I could see how and the two really good players at that stage in that band was Graham Green, yeah. the guitar player, yeah. and Tyrone. They yes. really had something. They, they they just had that X mm. factor. Excuse the expression again. Yeah, Graham at the time was. It reminded me a bit of me. He had all the bullshit yep. going on and the, the dance steps and the high kicks yes. and everything else, but couldn't keep his guitar in tune for more than two <laughs> songs because he was just hammering the crap mm -hmm. out of this thing. And both of those guys, uh, in fact, the whole band, but in particular, it started with Tyrone. I told him, you, you know, mate, your vocal is going off at the end of the night because yeah. you, you, you lose it. You've got no uh, stamina anymore. Yes. You know you're not you're not breathing properly. You got to go and get yourself fit. He went away, and I think in the space of maybe, again, I can be corrected, but I think it was something as short as maybe a couple of years. He became yeah. a black belt. Yeah, that's right. He went yeah. into martial arts. Uh, eventually, went on after Flash and all of us parted our ways and and went on into bands like the Bombers with the, the Brewster Brothers yeah, and yeah, uh, Al Lancaster right, yeah. from Status Quo. Um, but his, uh, all this training led him on to going to the States and uh, he had dojos all over Texas yes. and then he was with a company that transferred him to London mm. and it's just recently again he's decided after all these years and probably too many aching joints to give up being the sensei and mm. he's gone back into music which is great. I'm going to get in trouble for saying this but uh, reunion at the Charles Hotel uh, Flash Harry a while ago. I, I mentioned the Charles Hotel nearly <laughs> every every show because everyone's playing there again so you I you love know, it. I used, to, I used to manage that place as yes. one of my jobs yep. and until one of my Actual one of my closest, well, closest friends walked in and stuck a stuck a gun in my face. Had can a little you, bit of a. Can you tell us a little bit about that story, please? <laughs> oh, you uh, real? Uh, I can remember it as the long weekend. It was the same weekend that Jeff Fennick won his world title, and the hotel was only one of three hotels in Perth that had Sky Channel. Yep. Um, forerunner to all cable TV and we had Fennec on the TV and because we got it installed and stuff there's also the footy on mm. so suddenly this long weekend became like monster Massive, monster yeah. weekend and uh, I was um, at, on the Monday night we'd also had one of Dez's shows in there the yeah. um, you know the you know you had the Nook and Busters and yeah, I don't yeah. know what they called the one at the yeah, Charles yeah. but that was an all-day Yep. thing on the Monday of the long weekend and I'm sitting in the office after they'd finished and I'm counting up the money. And Piles of cash. Yeah, it was a, it'd been mm. a good weekend. Mm. It'd been a good weekend. And uh, uh, Louis, my uh, security, my head security guard, he goes, oh, you're right, boss. I'm, you know, I said, yeah, I'm just about to chuck the money in the safe and mm. lock up. And I said, Louis, you take off. Off he went. I heard the door shut, thinking that was him leaving. But he had actually left a different way. The door shutting was um, one of the previous managers who'd been sacked, who ironically enough was a fan of the invaders mm. and used to follow the invaders around. And, um, so you knew who it was? I didn't at the time. No, um. I actually got arrested that night. I had a rhythmic heart attack and hit the floor and... and uh, what, just so, from the fear of... Oh, yeah, what, yes. yeah, yeah. I mean... Wow. There's something, something about the hammer of, a, of mm. a, even a replica going back and you're looking down that. It's uh, the only thing that opens is not your mouth. Everything yeah. else opens up. Yeah. And I just remember sort of 
feeling my head roll back. The next thing I remember going face down on the floor and actually looking at the guys who, who was burst in with his black balaclava. Right, yeah. I had my face down on his shoes and then mm. I just heard him rifling the safe. Got away with the money. So did they did catch him? Yeah, they yeah. Did? yeah. Well, no. as I said, the, the, there was no point of break. So the detectives just marched into the hospital yeah. and went, hey, have a bracelet, we're just going to attach it to your bed here and we'll be back to talk to you. And I'm sort of <laughs> looking at him going, you what, you know? And wow. I found out the next day that I was the major suspect and... Wow. That I'd pulled an inside job and I'd faked, you know, and I just remember the doctor and one of the detectives, the doctor getting really miffed with this guy going, hey, dude, you don't, you don't, you don't bullshit this sort of mm, stuff, you know, absolutely. this is all the reports and, yeah, he's, he's had a massive dose of adrenaline and it's brought on an, uh, an arrhythmia. Wow. That was it. Months later, uh, or weeks later, actually, it was discovered it was... And uh, oh, didn't sorry, didn't mean to mention his name. Okay, um, you, did, you only mentioned his first name. That's all. Yeah. Do we have to cut that, or are we all right? Uh, oh. Cool. Well, I say we can can't cut either. So <laughs> how are you supposed to? Anyway, with the budget we've got, you know. That's yeah. Well, did Al buy any sandwiches or pizza? No, I'm really hungry. Nothing right? tonight. Nothing. Nothing. I'll tell you what. In between the next one, I'll I'll just race out and grab you something cool, if you like. Mate. Thanks a lot. Because as you can see, I'm fading away to a yeah. blimp here. Yes. Yeah. Um, Rock Awards, that was something to do with you, wasn't it? The whammies yeah. and uh, yeah, you know, yeah. like with Greg Green and we and had uh, Peter Woodward, Brian Peacock. Oddly yeah. enough, oddly enough, uh, back in the day, uh, in, in, in getting into management, Des, Des and Sharon Dawes uh, yeah. were, were monsters in yeah. the town. And you had uh, Brian Davidson and yeah. and uh, what were they called? Focus, Focus Promotion, Promotions, yeah. and Squasher and his friend. Um, whose name I can't remember either. So there was like that altered state, they were yes. called. So there was lots of everybody yes. into each other and stuff. But There's a lot of remember competition. Peter, yeah, and I remember Peter Woodward going around all the gigs trying to get musos to join up to the yep. musicians' union. And yep. and so we, okay, we'll play the game. We'll see if, see if we can get more than, you know, $47.50 yep. for a gig, which is yep. what you were getting paid in the day. Yeah. I uh, used to go to these meetings and then we'd sit around and listen to the symphony orchestra bitch about the fact that they didn't get chocolate chip cookies <laughs> and they only got seven minutes and the cup of tea wasn't <laughs> right. So all the, the contemporary, the rock players yeah. just went, you know, yeah. we're over this left. We all finished up as much as we were competitive. We all spoke together and we formed the WA yes. Rock Music yeah. or Rock Mu Music Industry Gee, Association. Des, um, Barry Lytton, um, yep. Phil Lear from 96 yep. FM back in the day, um, Margaret Robinson from yep. the union, which in turn Brian Peacock became yep. involved in. And it was just trying to give the, the music industry, our music industry, um, some kind of voice and some identity. kind of represent yeah, an yeah. identity. Yep. And, and then we were fortunate enough to have people like Bob Marr come yep. on board like he always did. Yes. Bob was Bob was incredibly supportive of the music industry, and we finished up going like, "Let's go Hollywood." <laughs> and we put on, you know, the Rock Music Awards, yeah. and then uh, we looked at introducing a, a Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. For, yeah, yeah. And this is like our when we first started yep. talking. Yeah. None of those people, those guys that opened the doors for us, that mm. that knocked all the fences over. Yeah that created what we walked into and enjoyed, none of them had been acclaimed. Yeah, that's right. Not, not acclaimed, but not even acknowledged. Yes. And I mean, I just had this thought of, look, just put a chart up on the wall and name every guy that, you yes. know, that played. Because some of them, mm. you know, were just truly mm. great players. And, um, and amongst that, were, there were great entertainers, but again, as I said, there was sure. a differential, the difference yeah. between the entertaining bands yes. and the guys who were serious. You know, you yeah. used to go up to the Latin Quarter and you'd see mm. Sweet Velvet yes. with Jenny Wren and mm. um, um, young, what's the boy's name? He's just recording and his father, Nelson. Um, Mike Nelson. Mm. 
those guys, they are extraordinary players. And you'd, you'd go to these jazz clubs in Perth and you'd see cats like Keith Van Gaisel, yeah. who probably some of you guys don't know. I know him But they well, were yeah. just, I mean, he's a, this is Berkeley mm. dude, you know. Yes, like he's, right. he's serious, good players. Mm. And you could go to these pockets all over Perth at different times. Mm. And that's how I got to learn. Yeah. You got to see these sensationally good players yeah. amongst some really good entertainers, yep. but they deserve to be recognised and yeah. it just wasn't happening. Yep. Nothing happened and it was just all about, just, not that I, you know, hold anything against them, but it was just all about the symphony orchestra yeah, and right. look after the symphony orchestra. That, they were the only musos, all the rest of mm. us were, yep. you know, we weren't musos. We yep. couldn't read charts, so you weren't musos. Yeah, you know. you're an ent entertainer. Yeah, exactly. Get that one up. Mm. So let's move sideways a little bit. Mm. Um, if you were stranded on a desert island, what would be the album? You, you, you could think maybe a week I'm going to be stranded for the next year or so. What, what would the album, your favourite, that you would take? Something you, you, you could not stop that listening to. That would be, uh, without hesitation, that would be terror, the best of terror power. Wow, mm. cool. First person. Or, or maybe the best of Toto. You can't have two. But, no, okay, terror power. Okay. And um, so who are you listening to here in your car? On, on the way here. I was listening to a band I used to met. I had the great privilege of managing uh, the world famous Oralettes, wow. who were your predecessors yes, at, at, at Gobbles. Gobbles, that's yeah. right. Mr. Jim Rossiter and Jim Rossiter. In fact, uh, that's have you seen it. Jim lately? Or oh, I spoke to Jim only oh, probably four or five days ago. How's, yep. how's he going? Yeah, he's yep. good. You know, he's uh, like all of us. He's getting old. Yeah, but he's still got he's still got the quick wit. Yep, and. Uh, but yeah, that's what I was listening to. Cool. What a what a travesty that that yes. band never became something mm. huge. Brilliant band, Alan oh. Peters and the the wall. The, well, the, even the, the album was. is still valid. Yeah, yeah. Mm. So best Perth band you saw live? That's a hard one. Yep. Um, it would be best band would probably be Perfect Strangers. Wow, cool, great band. Um. Uh, and Manteca. Well, great band as well. Well, orchestra, but... The old Melvin. Oh. Remember, I don't know what it was called then. Mate, I, used I, I, used to, I used to bribe the lady <laughs> on the door because I, I wanted to be the first guy yeah. in there because all these other fuddy-duddies yeah. were going in there, you know, and I wanted to be up the front. Yeah. I wanted to be right in front. <laughs> I wanted to be able to see um, the drummer in that band was Glenn Walsh. That's right. Great drummer. Great vocalist, yeah. so I just wanted to be as close as I could to him. Yeah. So I used to turn up early, and then while she was setting up, I'd give her ten bucks. You know, that's my five bucks for coming in, and five bucks if when when you open the door, you let me in first. <laughs> but that's over, and uh, our life, and geez, you know, yeah. look at that band, what, 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 what yeah. serious heavyweights yeah. in that band, serious yeah. heavyweights, yeah. And so your favourite TV show growing up. Would that have been? I'm probably going to say the same as everybody in my genre, and I'd say F Troop. Well, I get F Troop's eight out of ten, I think. Do you really? Yeah. It's either that, or I'd have to ashamedly admit to Gilligan's <laughs> Island or something, just because I wanted to have a look at uh, what was her name, uh, the actress who was Ginger. Was, oh, Ginger. Well, had the hots for well, ginger big time. It's more like, for me, it was more like Wilbur. <laughs> hey, Wilbur. <laughs> so, um, do you collect anything, John? Um, I don't actually collect, but what I've kept is since playing and now in my business, uh, I work with, I'm fortunate enough to work with uh, major international tours. Yeah. Um, so I recently realised that I had about five and a half thousand ID laminates yep. and T-shirts and uh, because you just don't wear them, you know, go home, somebody gives you a free batch of merch. So I know that you, you've, you know, been with all of them, every international act that's come in Perth probably in the last Pretty 20 much, years. Yeah. yeah. So what, what would be the funniest story you could tell me or you're allowed to tell me on air um, from those times? Is there something that sticks out of your mind there? Um, look, lots. 
do, but the reason they do is because they're all on the they're all on the left side yeah, of centre. No um, worries. That's cool. You you don't yeah, have to answer that question. Yeah. No. Given given I might bump in to at least one of these people, I won't tell <laughs> tell us. No. There's um, one for the record. Yeah. Peko didn't tell a story. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to tell. This is a new question. First time on our show. Well. Who would you nominate for us to interview? Oh. Really? Really? I really love if you would go and speak or get Peter Anderson. Yep. Lead. He is the lead man with the Troubadours. Yep, I know. And the Troubadours nurtured me. Yep. Or tolerated me, probably. <laughs> they used to rehearse a couple of blocks from where I lived and I used to hang with them but Peter is the he was the consummate as I saw it in the day he was the consummate vocalist professional yeah. always looked a million dollars on and off stage yeah. always you know he fitted every you know ticked every box mm. for me played the sax he could dance he could sing he could play drums great entertainer great great yeah. um, great front man and um yeah, I'd like this. You know, some of the older guys. I'm, I'm sure there's going to be plenty of time to acknowledge and and uh, and speak to the younger yeah. dudes. Yeah. But yeah, you'd, you'd get some seriously good stories out of that because the Troubadours, when I first started touring, they were the biggest thing in yeah. this country. They yeah. were bigger Very than Slice Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So do you know who started? You know, they called you Jesus Christ Super Slow. <laughs> Where did that come from? Um, I've got to ashamedly admit that while having my Tuesday morning band meetings, which was always followed by golf with the road crew so that I could win all their money back that I just paid them, <laughs> um, I, I was pretty, yeah, I was pretty full of myself and I was getting into them. I just didn't think this particular gig I'd seen was was you know really good yeah you know they were all pumped and fuzzy around the edges <laughs> and i just thought it was a load of pop so i proceeded to tell them so after which time i was told i was a misogynistic bastard by by the lady keyboard player and who do you think you are you think you're god and i then said i am god while you're working for me, you'll do what you're bloody well told. <laughs> uh, that then just, I think Ian Cameron, Ian Cameron was probably responsible for it and Ian had been our manager in The Invaders and our lighting, lighting guy. guy. Yeah. Ian, yeah. And, uh, he's in London, he went to London, didn't yeah, he? Yeah, yeah, no, he's, he's now living in Mount Tambourine in, in Queensland. Okay. Spoke to him last week as well. And, uh, yeah, he, we turned up a... We turned up at a big, you know, birthday gig for Flash at yeah. the um, at the generator at the Morley Park, and in his creativity, he had got all these LEDs and stuck them on a board, and it, the board was over the entrance to the backstage area, and it said, "Peko is God." Okay, so it wasn't and, Jesus Christ of love. Yeah, so then because we had played golf with the boys, yes. and then that became a bit of a, you know, okay. have a dig at me because I thought, well, that's, you know, that's pretty offensive, <laughs> you know. Got down gently, flipped it and crossed <laughs> myself. And, and um, they turned up at my birthday party, uh, on my birthday with a a gown that you'd have a box, you know, a boxer would go into a boxing ring yep. with and across the back it had super slav. Okay. <laughs> so... That afternoon, after the Jesus meeting, Christ, super slow. exactly, and of course I didn't go there. No, um, <laughs> I went to tee up, and as everybody had teed up, and there were balls going left, right, and centre, and stuff like that. So as I dressed the ball and stood back, I started humming and going, hmm, 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 <laughs> super slow, and it just, and that's how and it started. just all a joke. Um, have any unfulfilled ambitions? Hmm. That's a that's a loaded question right now. Um, okay. Probably like to take my son to the G. Excellent for a grand final. Yep. 
Well, this year it won't be. You're a West Coast man, aren't you? Yeah, um, won't be West Coast. I don't think. <laughs> yeah, well, there's no there's no Jakovic's yeah. or Sumiches anymore. Yeah. There's no there's no good Slavs in that team yeah. anymore. So they're doomed to fail. So I'm just into good football right now. Yeah. Whoever plays it, I just really enjoy watching the game. And, yeah, cool. But not a yeah, not a big. E oh, I wouldn't say I'm a devoted Eagles fan by any stretch of the imagination. Another question that I've got to ask you because mm. just one of the questions we have every week is, what would you put on your gravestone? See, I told you I was sick. <laughs> that comes up all the time as well, Spike Milligan. Indeed. <laughs> okay, well, no I mean, believe me. Yeah. Well, I mean, what else can you put there? You know, you could, you could put a whole pile of crap. And, yeah. Um, mine, I probably put. I lived it to the fullest. Yeah. Okay. Last question. Tell us something that nobody knows anything about in your life. Something that nobody would know. Um, just whatever pops into your head. Um, I, was, I wanted to become a priest. <laughs> <laughs> the super slav priest. I'm offended that you laugh, Garrett. <laughs> Please. Well, just what I know about forgive, you and what we... Forgive him, Lord. He, he doesn't know what he's doing. Um, yeah, no, disappointed. Was strolling through life like there was no worries, thinking I was going to pass my leaving and I butchered it. Seriously considered becoming becoming a priest. Wow. Yeah. So that's true. Sorry I laughed. Mm. No, 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 it's all right. It was considered, Yeah. you know, but it was a serious thought, mm. serious thought. Well, look, thanks for giving us an insight Pleasure, on your mate. journey and, and what you did for the industry and you've done lots of very, very good things. And Can I ask a question? If you want to ask me a yeah, question, yeah. go for it, John. How's your football team? My football team won the championship yeah. this year and so we're back you, in the Premier League. You get to play with us? Again? Yes, yeah. yeah. You're, um, hammers. Oh, Worst hammers, hammer, that's mate. right. You're always hammers. Same yeah. as Jamie and yep. hammers and Kim Musa and yeah, all those Aaron guys. Aaron yeah. lot lots of them. We're, we're all the we're the loser supporters. You can bet me a bottle of scotch on that if you like. And, and Mate, I don't I like drink Glen Fiddy. Is I don't I I I like Geordies. Yeah, I know. You I do. don't I don't mind Newcastle. It's just Good you, on you. if Sunderland, you know, that's a yeah. My mum was from Sunderland, but you knew my mum pretty but, well as well. But Ed, <laughs> no. If Ed liked Sunderland, <laughs> I'm back on Sunderland. <laughs> Your mum was a cracker, mate. Yeah. She was a cracker. John, look, wonderful to have you in. Really appreciate you just coming and sharing your story Pleasure, with us. Mate. Thank Pleasure. you very much. Really appreciate it. And uh, please, viewers, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. And if you give us a thumbs up, uh, we'll let you know what's coming up and when it's coming up. And Mr. John Pekovich, thank you very much. Pleasure, mate. See you later. Thank you.
away with William Tell Stick a fork up his nose and run like hell What a day, what a day When his britches fell for Tell and Switzerland Shut your mouth, you naughty boy You desecrated our whole song We practiced it for days and days And still you got it wrong You got it wrong I'm a singer in a million and my mother always said that I would make it big You're a little twit and I couldn't give a damn The point of the matter is you've ruined our gig Ruined our gig <laughs> Story's been the same one ever since I joined this crummy band It's always sing the next one but the next one never comes I want to sing in front of girls, all the girls Across the land, the only time they'd let me is if we sang in front of nuns. Renton, that's not true, you know we like to give you a chance, but in the meantime, we you set to for a dance? Oh, what? 